Maybe you've already seen my video on my recommendations for diesel oil changes because a lot of things I say in that video, I'm going to also say in this video. <laughs> because one of the key reasons for premature diesel engine failure is lack of frequent oil changes. And if you want to know what my recommendations are for these oil changes in these old Mercedes diesel engines, I'll put a link below and you can watch that video. But if you've seen that video, some of what you see in this video is the same. But I'm going to focus on four things in this video that will cause premature engine failure. That's, you know, well below 200,000 miles, sometimes below 100,000 miles, because I'm sure you've all heard, oh yeah, those Mercedes diesel engines will go for a million miles and I would argue that's not necessarily so. If they're maintained properly and they get frequent oil changes, that's the number one thing. They never get overheated. They never get neglected. You could possibly go a million miles, but the average Mercedes diesel on the street does not go a million miles because it passes down to ownership. It starts to get neglected. And one of those key things that gets neglected is oil changes. So, there's oil changes, there's some other things, but I want to show you some samples that can back up what I want to say in this video. From what I've seen working in and around these old Mercedes diesel for the last 20 plus years, I'm going to say the number one thing that will kill a diesel engine is excessive piston ring wear and cylinder wall wear. Because when that happens, you have a whole cascade effect of problems. Not only do you have weak compression that makes the engine very hard to start, but you get an oil burner and the oil burner also creates poor fuel combustion. And then you get fuel rinsing down the cylinder walls and contaminating the oil and on and on it goes. So if you want your engine to last, you have to protect the piston rings. Now what I have here on the bench is I have a piston and a crankshaft removed from a 1983 240D that had 180,000 miles on it. That, yes, that's correct, 180,000 miles on it and it died. It just was burning too much oil and in the cold weather, it did not have enough compression to start. And you're thinking, well, these Mercedes diesels are supposed to go a million miles. How could that wear out at 180,000 miles? Well, let me show you. And here is a piston that I removed from a 300D turbo that had 230,000 miles on it. And I'm gonna show you why I think it got frequent oil changes. Okay, this one didn't get oil changes, okay? Somebody neglected, and I know it's true from the previous owner of the car, but people think that, oh, I can just go five, 10,000, or maybe I'm lazy, or maybe I'll go 12,000 miles between oil changes. You may have just lost 50,000 miles off your diesel engine by running at 5,000 miles past an oil change, okay? Now let's take a closer look at these two pistons, and I wanna show you the difference, and then we're gonna take a look at this crankshaft, and I'll explain why I feel that piston rings are even more important than crankshaft bearings. First, let me show you up close the piston rings on this 240D piston that only had 180,000 miles on it. Couple things you're gonna note. Right away, you're gonna notice how shiny the rings are. Look at how shiny they are, indicating quite a bit of wear. You're also going to look at the amount of slop in the piston ring land on that top ring. So this piston is shot. See, the problem is once those rings start moving in the groove like that, it will accelerate wear, causing more oil to blow by. And here you can see evidence of the amount of oil that was blowing by the rings. Look at the carbon built up along the side of the piston there. And then the other thing, look at the side of the piston. You get scratching. See the scratching right in there? And I've even got a little bit of piston pin wear. So this is excessive. And this is very indicative of an engine that got neglected as far as oil changes. See the scratching there? Uh, see the wear in the piston rings, the slop in that top compression ring, the amount of oil carbon buildup along the sides of the piston there. Now we'll set that one aside and let's compare it with this 300D piston that came out of an engine with a lot higher mileage. First off, look at the rings. You see, you don't see a lot of shine in the ring. In fact, this middle ring here, you can still see some of the factory marks in it. 
and look at the side of the piston. You can still see the machine marks running horizontally across here and then look at the top of the piston, how much cleaner it is. And then finally, this is the real cincher right here. Look at how tight the groove is in that top compression ring. So this piston might even be usable, although I do not recommend reusing old pistons when you're rebuilding a diesel engine. So this engine got maintained because at 230 to 250,000 miles, if it had not gotten regular oil changes, you would probably see a piston that looks like this or even worse. So now I want to show you the crank. See that? This is the crank that came out of that 240D engine. Now, notice the journals on the crank mains and the rods. They're like brand new. There's no scoring. So you see, the crank didn't suffer. Uh, it could have, but it didn't. These cranks are very robust. What you'll see is you'll see wear in the sprockets from lack of frequent oil changes. But primarily, once again, this is the killer right here. The piston rings and the cylinder walls that get excessive wear from neglect. Now, remember, lack of frequent oil changes is only one of the issues. A lot of times, the four of them overlap with each other. But in this particular case, this was a nice car. This 240D was a nice driving car, but it had been neglected as far as oil changes and the engine wore out way before it should have. Now let's talk about the other three things that could cause excessive ring wear other than just oil, frequent oil changes. I bet after watching this video, you'll become a believer like I've become in the importance of frequent oil changes. Now there's three other things that can cause excessive ring wear and excessive cylinder wall wear in these older diesel engines. It's very important you understand usually it's a couple of them or two or three of them working together and they just cascade upon each other and make the whole situation worse. And when that happens, you get pistons that look like this one that came out of the 240D. And the symptoms, of course, are burning a lot of oil, adding a quart every 300 miles or whatever, and also hard starting when it gets you know, down below freezing, maybe into the teens, the engine won't even start because of weak compression. So it's a cascading effect, and I'll explain that now, because number two is fuel injectors, all right? If these fuel injectors are squirting diesel fuel, not spraying it, not misting it, but squirting diesel fuel into the pre-chamber and into the cylinder walls, your diesel engine is going to run. It's probably going to run quote unquote fine. This is one of the problems. People drive these cars, they seem to be running okay, they just keep driving them until something breaks. But the problem with diesel fuel injectors on these particularly these old mechanical injectors, it's very insidious. It kind of creeps up on you and you don't know it because you can't see it. You, the first indication may be uh, reduced fuel economy. The second may be someone's complaining about the smoke coming out of your tailpipe. The other one might be, you know, a little bit harder starting in the morning even though you've changed the glow plugs because if the injectors are squirting fuel instead of misting it, they're gonna wet those glow plugs down very quickly and then your engine's gonna start, it's gonna run rough and smoke and you might think, oh, it's, it's my glow plugs went bad again. So injectors are extremely important because what happens is if these are squirting excessive fuel into the pre-chamber, where do you think that fuel goes? <laughs> it doesn't get burned, that's right. It goes right by the piston rings and right into the oil. So you see what I mean when I say a cascading effect of problems here? Because you think, well, I'm going to go five, 6,000 miles between oil changes, and you don't know that your fuel injectors are not performing adequately. And suddenly, these fuel injectors are not only spraying and washing down the cylinder walls, creating more wear in the piston ring, but they're also diluting the engine oil. And that diluted engine oil provides less lubrication to the cylinder walls and the piston rings. And you're going down the freeway at 70 miles an hour, not realizing that every hour you drive, you're probably losing about a thousand miles of life out of that engine. So it's very important that you make sure your fuel injectors in your old diesel engine are operating properly. And that also includes injection pump timing. Because even if you install new injectors, but they're not firing at the right time, 
That could also mean that more unburnt fuel is washing by the piston rings, contaminating the engine oil, and then wearing the rings in the cylinder walls even more. Now the third reason, this is one that I don't think a lot of people really grasp, but I've seen this happen on a couple engines. If you overheat a diesel engine, let's say you lose a little coolant and the engine overheats, you know, and you, you blow a head gasket and you say, wow, I'm just gonna put a new head gasket on this engine and everything will be fine. Now on some gas engines, that may be okay, but I always say it's never just a blown head gasket. And this is particularly true on diesel engines because when you overheat the engine due to coolant loss, what happens is you get extreme high temperatures in the cylinder head and the upper parts of the cylinder walls. And guess what happens to the piston rings? Those piston rings overheat and they lose their spring tension. Understand what's going on here? They will lose their spring tension due to excessive heat. Then you go ahead and install a new cylinder head gasket and you think everything's fine. Suddenly after a thousand miles, you realize you're burning a lot of oil. What happens here, it, once again, a cascading effect of problems. You've overheated the engine. You've put on a new head gasket. Um, you know, you're hoping that's gonna fix the problem, but what happens is your piston rings are now weak. It's allowing too much oil to blow by the pistons and along with oil is allowing unburnt fuel because at the lower compression your fuel is not burning completely <laughs> and so on it goes so all of a sudden with just a thousand miles you have contaminated your engine oil with not only excessive diesel fuel but soot soot from unburned carbons that do not escape out the exhaust pipe they go right by the piston ring now the fourth thing, of course, that can destroy a diesel engine is catastrophic loss of, of fluid, coolant and oil. Now if that happens, uh, we've already talked about the problem with loss of coolant, and then it will overheat the heads and the pistons and the rings. Sometimes if you get it too hot when you blow a head gasket or you lose a radiator hose, you may actually seize the piston <laughs> in the cylinder, and then, you know, all bets are off. But a lot of times, if an engine has lost oil, let's say you've broken an oil cooler hose, or you loaned your diesel to somebody and they didn't check the oil. I've, I've heard this and seen this a few times where, oh, I just let somebody use my diesel car and they didn't realize you have to check the oil more frequently. And they run out of oil and, you know, the light comes on, or the gauge, they notice or they start hearing funny noises in the engine. They think, well, we'll just put some more oil in it. Not so. If you lose oil in your diesel engine, a catastrophic loss of oil, you have ruined the engine. There's no saving it. And that's when you're going to open this up and see scoring. You may not see excessive wear on the rings, but you're going to see scoring in the bearings of the crankshaft. If you have excessive oil loss to where the engine makes noise, start looking for another engine. If you have overheated the engine to the point where it quit, start looking for another engine. That's just my humble opinion from my experience. You try to fix those two scenarios and you're gonna be chasing, what, what I say, the inverbial tail of trying to get an old worn out engine suffering from catastrophic failure to even run properly down the road. So those are the four things. How do you prevent them? Number one, frequent oil changes with quality oil. I recommend Chevron Dello or Shell Rotella. Every 3,000 miles with a new quality German filter. Don't use these cheap aftermarket filters. Uh, use quality German filters, okay? The other thing is be very careful about loss of any fluid. That's particularly engine oil and coolant. You know, replace those old worn out oil cooler lines. Replace heater hoses, radiator hoses, and belts. Now I've seen where people have lost the belt off the alternator and pulleys for the water pump, and that's caused an overheat situation too. So that's number two, you wanna be very careful. Watch for those things. Number three, you wanna make sure your injectors are working properly. We provide all kinds of resources, testers, new nozzles these are the new nozzles that you need to replace now if these are worn out you have to install nozzles and we highly recommend the ones from germany the monarch that we sell so you can kind of see you've got infrequent oil changes lack of injector maintenance and injection pump timing you have engine overheat 
due to coolant loss, and you can also have catastrophic engine failure due to rapid loss of engine oil. So those are the things you want to guard closely, very closely, if you want your diesel to go a million miles.